rectangles, do you mean there's bluestone sitting yeah, there? Yeah. That's so, waiting. That's what we had. That was that was material that was brought in. That was purchased. Was never, was never laid down. I don't think that was removed. What was removed was concrete. Well, yeah. This was broken. This was poured concrete patio. All of it. Right. Okay. Okay. So there was not bluestone there. Correct. Right. Correct. All right. It. I mean, here's here's my here's why I ask. Uh, your letter to us says that the patio has been substantially reduced. This you had a car, a minor car accident, right. from which I hope you recovered, yeah, yeah. and and that caused the thing to be adjourned, right? right? Um, at that time, the patio was 900 square feet, as you presented it to us. Now it's 830, mm -hmm. which is a difference of 70 square feet. That doesn't sound very substantial to me. But the area that is now not covered either by concrete or bluestone, just from my, you know, visual observation, looks to be somewhat more substantial than 70s. Yes, no, I'm I a think, little lost as to your numbers. What, I think what happened is we'd come to the conclusion that the whole back had to come out. That was not part of that. That would have been 1,300 and change, as I recall. It's this whole back part that comes out. From what was originally poured concrete that's reducing that number down to even 900, then further down to 870. This actual poured concrete patio, pre existing, was more or less, well, 1,300, I guess, 1,300 okay. square feet. Okay. So your original letter said we've already reduced it by 479. Right. You went from 1,300 roughly Correct. to 479 right. to 900. Now and now you've taken what? 70 taking around? We've taken this out over here and we've taken this out over here. Okay. We don't really need that over there. Now the blue stone rectangles that are sitting there on the side, what's yeah. their future? They have to be picked up and brought out, but quite frankly, as soon as we got the stop work order, everything stopped. Okay, they're not going back in. They're not, there's no place for them to go. Okay. Now, I mean, one. One further question. You are over by 28%. Mm -hmm. And I understand you bought the house that was already there. Correct. 28% um, is more than we usually consider, at least approved. And I mean, as I look at the house, I mean, it's obviously a nice house, and the pool and the patio are also very, very well thought out and well presented. Sorry to have the whole area between the house and the pool patio. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could you could be much closer to what's required under the code, and still have a perfectly good patio leading out to the pool. Right. It would be at this point now. Here is the you can see the sidelines of the house here and here. This is the house. The patio is confined to behind the house. All of the patio that's beyond the sides of the house has been removed. This has all been removed. It would be very awkward in any poolscape come out from the back of a house, you'd have to practically plant an island between the pool and the house in order to reduce that coverage. And granted, if I were redesigning this from the get-go, I'd bring the pool possibly closer to the house to maybe reduce that amount of coverage there. But this pool is where it is, and the house is where it is. And so to get from the house to the pool, in this little bit of space here now, that's all I have left to, to cover it. I would, like I said, I'd be, I'd be creating almost false gardens, in a sense, to reduce the coverage at this point. I'm tempted to ask you what would be involved in moving the pool, but I think we have <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> don't. Don't do that to us. Any uh, questions or comments from the board? No. Okay. I mean, I do think the number is high, but it is also a flatscape that doesn't interfere with the view of to the, the width of the house, uh, and some effort has been made in good faith to reduce the numbers to get to a point which is not as grievous as it was originally. <clears throat> so with some degree of discomfort, I will move to approve the application. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, let's vote from the right, John. I, yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much. All right. Continuing with my flexible scheduling, um, <laughs> the next matter I would like to have on is uh, Provenzano on Half Moon Lane. <laughs> Unfortunately, our engineer backed out.
out at the last minute. So um, he's not supporting the application. Oh, he. <laughs> yes, he absolutely is, but um, I spoke to him before. Um, but unfortunately, I don't have the poster. Okay, look, result. you were here. You were here in November. Yeah, and we were adjourned. So, as you remember, we were trying to um, renovate our patio with the new bluestone, and in doing that, we wanted to expand the patio um, to make it larger. And we were going to do that both in the southern direction as well as in the eastern direction. Um, and we were going 16% over a lot coverage. So what we did was we reduced the patio to as much as we possibly could to allow us to bring us the steps we want to build on our hill. So we have gone from 450, um, we now went from the 450 square feet to the 284 square feet. We went from the, um, we took 100 uh, square feet out of steps. And the, the sitting wall that is there is going to help us with the runoff as for the engineers. And we also included from the from our engineers a um, evaluation of our neighborhood to show the lot coverage and how and how we compare with lot coverage in the rest of the neighborhood. So now we're down to nine point four percent. Uh, in a nutshell, when you're here before, as you said, you wanted to essentially replace the present patio with a new one, right. extend it a bit toward the uh, elevated land right. behind you so you can get into the backyard with some steps. And I think what we questioned was why you needed to add to that existing patio, right. new patio to the south. Right. And you have very graciously withdrawn that as part of the application. And the sitting wall there, too. Okay, the sitting wall, which would have been with a new patio. Right. And which would be next to the patio that's already there, which you're replacing, remains in the application. Right. Okay. Surrounding the square of the stairwell. All right. Place. I went back to the property again uh, just to make sure I understood what you were doing, and apparently for a change I do. And uh, uh, it seems to me that what you are uh, proposing now is reasonable and more limited, and I, for one, appreciate you considering what was said before and changing the application. Uh, any board members want to comment on this one or any other questions? No. Okay. Um, we'll vote from the left, starting with Tom. Because, uh, second. Oh, we need a second. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a second? I, I will second it. Thank yeah. you. Uh, we're going to exclude Evan because he was unaccountably late. <laughs> Both from the left and uh, like a suitable party. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. Tell your engineer he's a bad man. <laughs> All right. Um, next up, Great Rock Terrace, Davis. Have you seen a copy of the letter that came in? I did not, but I... We have, we have two of them. I've heard about it. Okay. I mean, it's Actually, yes, no, I did see it. It's fine. Oh. Is there one that came in? Yes. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Well, I think it just needs two letters, correct? The one from Sokol and... Uh, and one Marshall. from Marshall. Yeah. Right. Davis's at Seven Gray Rock Terrace. My client has purchased this house. Um, garage, the existing garage is very small. Um, they would park two cars in a garage. They would also like some room for a uh, snow blower and card pools. They don't have those room, that room right now. Um, so we are proposing ex uh, rebuilding the garage uh, into a two two-car garage, and at the same time, uh, dressing it up a bit to make it a little more attractive from the street front right now. You just see the garage door and the uh, flat um, side of the gable. So we're adding the gable facing front. Um, in terms of the neighborhood, I put together a chart based on the Greenberg 
uh, property cards um, to show how it relates in scale with the coverage. Uh, one thing I'll point out about the Greenberg, when we do this, our only source is these property cards, um, and they only show houses and accessory buildings and decks. Um, they don't show retaining walls and all the other things that Irvington counts as coverage. Um, so while we have about 50% of the pro uh, properties currently there are over, <laughs> when you actually make a tour, and I tried to show that in the um, this page with all the photos, but it never prints as clearly as you would like it to. Retaining walls, there are a lot of patios. It's very hard to figure out exactly what the coverage is. I would suspect more of the properties are slightly over, if not similar. So I, I do not feel this uh, would be extensively out of keeping with the rest of the neighborhood. There are others tonight who <coughs> suggest that the numbers that are just over somewhat under what is really there. It's, I mean, it's every applicant. Of course. It says that or says nothing. It's nobody, very hard nobody to tell. Nobody does it the other way. Yeah. <laughs> it's very hard to tell unless, until you get a survey, until you do a project, you can get a survey. And I know the building department is actually going to start trying to keep some kind of record on that so we have a better database to work from. Right. Um, they want the historical stuff to be retained and then used again if right. possible. Right. Um, <laughs> so currently we are, um, at a, we are actually over. Uh, the allowable right now by 82 square feet, which is about 3%. Uh, we'd like to, the increase puts us up at 3,065, which is 17%, which is really an increase of 14%. Okay. All right, so the 14% you mentioned in your in your cover note was the increase over existing. Not exactly. What you, okay. So you agree the existing is 17? Correct. Point nine. Yes. Okay. Um, just to be clear, the, the one car garage that is there now is either going to be retained? No, it's going to be. <laughs> the original, as an architect, we always like to try and save things because if you think they'll help the budget. But it's such a, it actually would be just simpler to knock it down. Okay, but my point is you're not adding two car spaces to the north of the existing garage. The two car garage you propose is cover the existing garage and one more space. Correct. Correct. And you're also uh, expanding the asphalt drive, is that right? Yes. Okay, but that doesn't count because it's a drive. Right. Correct. All right. And the engineer has obviously taken that into, into his calculations, so uh, and they're working to a planning board on that right now. Okay. Uh, I did look at the property. And um, there is space on that side of the house. You're not, you're not going into a, a setback of any sort. Uh, and I also noticed that the house across the street and the two houses down the street towards Cedar Lawn all have either two or three car garages already. Correct. Without going into all the uh, uh, <clears throat> Greenberg numbers and so forth, that struck me as being fairly important because it keeps you in your proposal to be consistent with the houses in the neighborhood. I uh, thank you for your submission. Any uh, questions, comments, from the board? Should I drink something before you <laughs> Okay. Uh, I will move the uh, approval of this application as submitted. Do I have revised? Do I have a uh, second? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we do uh, a first timer for the Deepwood Road? Did you say 12? Did you say 12? Yes. Sorry. I didn't say 12. First timers. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was thinking about it. Yeah. We do, thank you. I got it. Yep. Thank you.
I don't know. You are not listed. Okay. Okay, then I guess there's no issue. You can check it. Okay. Yes. Please. Good evening, Steve. You need a microphone on or to speak? Um, We're not being recorded. Uh, I, I think, you know, we are supposed to be recorded, but I don't know that we actually are being. So, if you can use it comfortably, go ahead. If not, don't not ruin your evening. Okay. Steve Rossini and the architect representing her Scheinbergs at 12 Beachwood. Um, we are before you to request a variance from the rear. Four feet, four to touch 26 feet. For rear setback for the reconstruction and also extension of the existing wood deck in the back. Um, this property is similar to one that came before you this board last year over here uh, next door in Beachwood. Um, the way these houses were built were the, the house was built all the way to the west side and the driveway was put in the middle. Uh, and then there's the, the, the large portion of the yard here on the east side, which somewhat renders it unusable because you have to go across the driveway to really get to it. Plus, the property slopes down pretty steep away from the house. So it's really easy to use the hard area. There is the main area which you can use today. So what they're looking to do is to get older and they're not going to use the yard much for entertaining teenagers and adults. They like to really make a larger place for the grill, uh, table and chairs, and, and some other chairs and some other furniture. Um, going out is a logical way, going rectangular just to really configure the furniture as well. You still need that separation from the house. Currently, the deck is 12 feet. We're asking to make it 17 feet. Uh, that would put a 2.6 feet over the uh, site, the rear yard setback of 35 feet. Increase is, a, is only 70% um, over what is required. Um, and as you see, uh, the height of the deck is about five, six feet over here in the corner. On the other end, it goes down to about four feet. It's not a monstrous thing that's up in the air. Uh, in the backyard, four, four feet over the ground level. Four feet over the ground level. This is flat. It makes sound like it's stepped. You're yeah, right. right. It's because right. the property slopes down to the west. It uh, down to the, to the east this way. So, as you can see, this is. In the back of the yard over here on the survey, you can see there's a large row of evergreen shrubs that go across. They're probably about 20 feet high, actually. So in the backyard, there's really a nice screen. Um, to the left of them is actually because of the way the property is bulked up on the other side. To so this side over here, it's far away from the neighbor's property. Uh, and on this side, this is the one that just built a new deck last year and has a patio and got a variance for that as well. Um, so I don't think there is any objection to receiving letters or notifications. But I think it's screened adequately here. And far enough from here and not in the other single tradition. I think it's still in character, and I don't think it's excessive. Um, and really, it's not something that's not there already, which is just like you mentioned, two and a half feet. Okay, I, I went over there on Sunday and uh, walked up the steps and looked at the deck. I mean, it's, it's an adequate deck now, and you could expand it by three feet without ever needing the be here. Why do you need the extra two and a half feet? It, right now, the sliding glass door is right here by the uh, stairs, which really causes the whole area, so, you know, the five feet outside that, five to six feet outside that, um, is unusable. So then this whole area sort of becomes unusable as far as putting any type of pressure on the country <laughs> circulation. You know, you that's, where of, the, that's where the grill is, right? Yeah, the grill, right. So you've got um, the sliding glass doors sort of here, and then you've got the grill that's right here. Right. This area, as you come out the sliding glass, there's this, this, and then the grill. This really becomes unuseful. So what we're looking to do, you're really left with this over here. They're really looking to push it out. They have the claim to put tables and chairs here uh, with a little cabinet here and TV and two little corner couches in that spot right there. They have the furniture layout and they have an idea of how many, you know, the people that they invite out there now uh, for their parties, teenagers and adults, they know the capacity and they're realizing that they need a certain amount of area to, to accommodate that. You're right, we don't have to come here if we ask for the three feet. Uh, we're asking for the five feet just because of the layout that they had in mind. Uh, and I didn't think it was very excessive, but yes, you're right. Another thought, I mean, I, I did look at the surrounding area and you're right, there are, there's a lot of coverage in the back, so the people in the house directly in back are not that going to be protected as a deck already. But to the right, right. thank you. 
from the back. Right. There's an open area and there's a house that's right there. So the right yeah. 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 I mean, I, I think uh, your application would be enhanced if uh, you or you and your clients would undertake to provide screening in that area. The only thing I, I would be willing to accept, the only thing is, is this property slopes down two, four, six, eight feet to here. Any type of attic, and then the deck is five feet here. Any type of attic with screening for a house, then you're assuming the first story or so above to try and screen their view is a 20 foot evergreen. Um, you know, if I thought you had to plan an eight foot here, it would only come up to the bottom, to the ground level here. I don't know what type of adequate screening I can provide for that. Um, in addition, I mean, you're, you're really, you're coming, you're, you're, you're seeing the corner of the deck and it's only coming out another five feet on the same corner that was already existing. The stairs would be built in the same spot. And this house is 10 feet below that level of this house. Um, I know the obviously why you'd say this is 10 feet above looming over, but it's an existing situation. I'm not building a house. Which one is 10 feet below? This house down here. Um, I mean, this is six, this is a, I did two, four, six, eight, and by the time you get over here, you're 10 feet. Uh, so that's so far down that any type of screening on this property line would have to be, well, you wouldn't be able to get a tree or shrub right there right now. We've got to try and screen that back. If I put an eight foot tree here, yeah. it would be to the top of that tree, would be to the bottom, the, the, the ground level at the back. You wouldn't screen the back. Here. Right, but if, if the house that's neighboring mm -hmm. is that much lower than your house, it would provide some screening because of the. Is it from the yard we're concerned about, the people in the yard, or the. <clears throat> It, it, the, just, the first it, just looks, it just looks like a gap, you know. I'm not. I'm not asking you to put up a, uh, you know, balloon of some kind to prevent anybody from seeing anything. But it, it does look. It's a bare. Right. And you know, the neighbor may not have complained because neighbors don't normally do that. But I would. I would be. Uh, if I were the neighbor, I'd be grateful if there was some effort to shield them off from activity over there. It may not be perfect, but okay. Can okay. um, look and see what uh, if we can put in the if it's on the, on the board that we can put in some something in the resolution of approval that we would plan something appropriate. I guess I'd like to see where the house is. If it ends up being that the house is so another few feet down below that some evergreen shrubs might be high would work. If, if it's a little closer, then we're talking about five foot down. Those spruces are like that are going to grow to eight feet in about you know five six years or something like that. I don't know before. That's what we're talking about. I know the CAC probably want to have something to say with that as well. Uh, but well, you got a, Are your clients here? No, they're not. Okay, you got to talk to them. Anyway. I would gladly approve that. Some type of screening there. Um, it's approved by the village. Approved by the village. <coughs> um, in their access. Who, who in the? Who would you consult at the village about this? The. The whole the lots of committees. I know there's lots of committees. I'm sorry. Is it called the CAC? The ECB. The ECB. Yeah. Right. Right. The ECB. That's what I was referring to. I forget what her name is, but she, you know, she's the planning consultant. I, I consulted with her on the other property next door on some pages. I wrote okay. her letter, and she. Well, I not. Time. I don't want to bring you back again and, and draw this out, but I, I think what I would do is. Uh, uh, well, first of all, does anybody else have? Questions, comments, observations. No, well, I had the same reaction you yeah. did when I looked at the porch. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy to avoid this motley crew here by just cutting the deck back a little bit. But I understand your answer to Bruce's question. Okay. Anything else over? No, I think screening along the line, the property line, would be appropriate. Okay. Yeah. So what I would do here is to move to approve this, subject to your consulting with your client with a proposal to consult with the ECB, that would be that would be helpful if you did. Um, with a proposal about what you would do to screen that corner of the property. And we'll just have to consider that. We'll do it by telephone or something else. And if need be we'll bring it back, but my intention would be not to. More of an informal sort of issuing well, it's, paperwork or it's a condition. Board. No, I'll send you a letter which has this condition in it. Oh, that's great. So it's gotta be met. Yes. But um, I just don't want to bring you back again to discuss whether it's 17 or 18 or whatever. Understood. I appreciate that. So that'll be my motion. Madam Chair, you get that back? Okay. okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Let's go from the left. Evan. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes.
Thank you. Thanks, sir. Appreciate your time. All right. Next up will be uh, Mitchell on Rudder Dubois Lane. Just uh, for the record, I went to visit this property on Sunday. Louise apparently was five feet behind me the entire <laughs> entire day, and um, uh, they're in Field Point. Yes. And so Field Point has got very strict limits on what people can do and so forth. And any of these applications have to go through Field Point. Our materials, at least my set, did not. Uh, so I mentioned to Mr. Mitchell that. It would be a great idea if we brought along today, and this is it, and I will <coughs> stand it for a second. Okay. It looks like they have a bunch of conditions about what you have to do during construction and that sort of thing. But overall, they said they said yes, subject to that. And Trevor, there's yep. for the record. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay. So um, <clears throat> this is an application to legalize an existing patio uh, and also to install a uh, spa tub on that patio. Um, there are a number of variances that are required, one being exceeded coverage. Um, but if you look at the calculations, due to the small lot size in the 20,000 square foot zone, the lot is only 8,200 square feet. So um, meeting the requirement is difficult. And the fact that uh, the patio only increases by 20%. So we're already, the existing overage is already 28, and it's 16.8% to the 16%. Zone and again, that's what's already there. Legalizing the existing deck, I'm sorry, the existing patio only increases that by um, The other uh, variance that's required is uh, this uh, tub will be located in what is the side yard. Uh, it's a, um, a 15, 15 foot requirement that is eight feet one from the corner of the property. Uh, corner of the house to the property line. There is a 10 foot buffer between the property line and the edge of the pavement. And again, it is in condition that are not increasing. Uh, lastly, the tub will be located uh, less than 20 feet from the property line, um, actually 15 feet two, to from the corner of the tub to the property line. But again, there is a buffer there, and it does not go out any further than any of the lines of the building. There was a note, I believe, in the um, review from the building department that it extends beyond the footprint of the building. It, and the previous submission to the, uh, to the planning board did show it, but it was within, there's an, uh, a covered porch that, it, that it's going to sit under. It was still within the footprint of the covered porch, but it did extend beyond the footprint of the foundation. Uh, but we pulled it back now, so it will align. Okay. Um, the description of the application is far more daunting than I think you're actually going to do. I mean, the hot tub would be under the existing deck, Correct. on an existing patio, Correct. and screened by lattice? Yes. Full lattice walls on all three sides. The fourth wall is the foundation wall. There's Some also, of that lattice has to be replaced, right? Yeah, it's going to be replaced, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, all of it's going to be replaced. Yeah. Yeah. All of it's going to be replaced, yes. And there is uh, some generous uh, landscape screening all along that side of the property also. And what's, what's the, uh, the gap in the lattice going to be in the lattice? Three quarters of an inch. Okay. They're going to be two and a half inch slabs, two by three, uh, one by three slabs with a three quarter inch gap. Okay. Is the 20 feet that it, it's causing trouble, is it 20 feet from 
from where the lattice will be, the edge of the patio, to... Uh, the ordinance states that the pool can't be located within a 20-foot buffer from the property line. Right. So the, the lattice is within that 20-foot well, further within that 20-foot is, buffer. Is, is, this, is this going to be as a patio, whatever you're going to do, going to be within 20 feet of Rudder to Wall Lane? The existing patio is, yes. Okay, I mean, just from observation, it looks like the longest 20 feet I've seen in a while. Yeah, that, there's a 10-foot buffer from the property line to the edge of the pavement, so it, it, oh, it okay. definitely visually is, is bigger. I see. Additionally, this is a, it's a road. Yeah. This is a road, and this is a road, so there are really no affected neighbors. The neighbor to the east, there's a, there's a pretty good distance, 30 feet on this side to the property line, and there's another 30-foot setback on the east side, so, so there's, a, there's a good distance between the two houses. Other than that, you know, this is all road. Right. Right. Okay. Questions, comments? Where's the lattice going? So this is around the patio. All around this part of the patio is here. The lattice will go and so around that section that's under the um, screen and porch. And that's where this is where the tub is. Okay. And there'll be a gate right here, right up in the landing. I, I was very glad I visited uh, because just from the right up, it looks like there was no, no chance in hell. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think what you're proposing, given that it's under the deck on the existing patio and going to be well screened, uh, makes, makes some sense. So, again, I will move the approval of this application. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Close from the right, Sean? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. That's it. Oh no, wait. Not Hello. Sarah. Okay. No. Uh what if I get the yeah, they could go to Sarah Palermo or I could give her what I think is easier for you. Okay. Okay.
Um, the existing coverage right now is a, a few percentage, about three or between three and four percent over allowable uh, coverage, and where we're ending up is about nine percent over allowable. Uh, the, the reason that the coverage is not increasing very much is because there's a patio already in the location. There's a patio with a roof above it, or, or the location of the addition. On the right hand side. That's the right. base of Right. So right now there's a patio, a, you know, patio with a covered roof patio in that area, and we are planning to occupy that same place with the extension of the house. And there's, there's this also an issue where I think we've indicated that where the patio is already in the area where the extension of the house is supposed to be. And the width has gone beyond the existing patio just because of the required width to make the dining room work and to make it better and more the both the dining room and the bedroom that's been proposed about 12 feet wide. So it's a very minimal room. Okay. So the increase in structures by 300 square feet is the building you're adding and taking out the deck of 254. Yes, which is net plus 50, right. and your overall plus 70 with some minor changes to retaining walls and so forth. Right. Okay. All right. Might as well move on to FAR. Unless anybody has questions on those two. No. Okay. So FAR, I think the, the real struggle that we're having with FAR is that the number that we're presenting to you is higher than what is is higher than what is specifically proposed. It's, it's that's two question of whether it's substantial or not. And um, the first argument that we wanted to make, there's an argument to be made about the neighborhood. After the what, what is the number? It's 127, I believe. Okay. 120%, 7% yes. yeah. Option one. Option one. Right. right. Uh, so just to review, um, this, this, uh, Increase above the allowable is really related to how the attic is treated, if the attic is being treated. The goal of the client is to have the attic be a finished attic accessed by a stair so that it can be used for storage and help this relatively small house. So the way the code is in Irvington, if, the, if this attic were <coughs> unfinished and accessed by a scuttle, just a drop down stair, we would be at 0%. I mean, we would be at 100%, so we wouldn't be asking for a variance for this same point. Um, if it's accessed, if that same, if that same attic is um, accessed by a stair as opposed to a removable stair, it is, um, it goes up. I'll just confirm that that is, it goes up to 100%. So whether, as soon as you access an attic by a stair or you access, or you finish an attic, whether it was accessed by a skull or anything, any kind of finishing that attic, the volume of calculation increases. So the, there's three scenarios that we've been through. The first one is the proposed, which you see the attic is counted at 630 square feet because it's counted at 100%. The second one is an unfinished attic, attic um, access from the staircase. So the benefit of that is that there is a part of it, rather than being counted as 100% part of it, is being counted as 50% in that one. And that drops the percentage over to 14% over level. And then the last option uh, shows if we left the attic unfinished, put the scuttle in, or basically took took the stair out, they used the stair, but the scuttle in would be zero percent. I bring this up um, for a few reasons, but it goes to impact, right? And I think what the 127 percent, um, if we look at that as a measure of the impact or the measure of the substantiality of the proposed variance. It seems like a lot if we just look at the number, but if you compare it to the fact that there's a by right version that is like the exact same size as what we're showing, the same volume that would have the exact same impact on the neighbors, and that would be our argument to say that in this case, the 127 isn't substantial because we could simply pull the stair out and we could unfinish the attic and we would be at the allowable level. So that, that's really our major argument. I mean, we could go through the neighborhood, we do have neighborhood analysis, and one of the things that I just wanted to point out about the neighborhood analysis, if you look at the FAR calculations, we went through there and we decided that this and did a much more robust review of that, and all the houses where the attic is being counted as 100% are in this range, they have an average of about 130% over, 
So there's only three that we did that to in the neighborhood of houses. So we can't get inside the house. We don't know whether we have a stair or not. So if you take those three and you average them, you're at the same level. So I think also in terms of characters in the neighborhood, if you take down houses and say, like, if all these attics were finished, where would the standard be? It would be about 130%. So from both of those sides, whether it's benefit to the owner versus potential impacts, we're sort of arguing that this, what we're proposing is not substantial, but then also in terms of character, we think it's, it's uh, consistent with the character. What you have there now is an existing stair for the attic? Yes. It's like a, it's a tiny turning stair, so it's not like a code compliant full stair, but it's like an attic stair, but not a full kind of a fixed stair. You have a fixed stair. It's unfinished. We have a fixed stair. It is an attic that has a finished floor but not finished walls. We're not okay. sure how Ed would interpret it. I think most likely we would be, if we went the other way, we'd have to pull the stair out and also pull out the floor finish okay. to get to where we need to make sure. So, so how are you counting the attic before the renovation? Is it, are you counting it at 100%? Uh, I think we are counting, let me just make sure I'm correct here. Yeah, we're counting as finished. You represent a footnote that the existing attic has been calculated 100%. Yeah, it is because, well, the attic would do that. It's just, I mean, I'm sorry, the stair would do that. Yeah. The very sudden, it doesn't matter if it's finished or not. So the intended yeah. object, but so you're, yeah, it is kind of, it is kind of as a Okay. And the increase in FAR by the renovation? Uh, it goes from um, about 2,200 to 2,800, so an increase of about six steps. So that's on three floors, so it's about 200 square feet on each floor. Okay, now, John, go to 0 0.10. Oh, you're there. Okay. Um, you have the existing condition floor area diagram for the attic at 629 square feet. Right. And then down below, you've got the proposed condition for the attic at the same number. Aren't you adding an attic? Yes. So that in this case, the attic space over here is being counted at zero percent because in that area of the master suite, the ceiling is increasing. So the space underneath the space of the attic is calculated from is basically the height of the attic. So the height of the attic in that case from the ceiling on the floor below to the ceiling on the floor above is less than five feet, so it's being counted. And it's an unfinished space, and it's not accessed by a stair, a stair because it's a mechanical roof that's walled off. Oh, it's walled off. The existing attic, we will not have access from the existing attic to the expanded attic. No, you'll have access to the mechanical space from uh, through the master bedroom ceiling through a scuttle. And again, this is, <laughs> this is our way to make that count as uh, well, we need we need a mechanical space. So part, part of it is that we need a mechanical space for an air handler in the attic. Uh, in this case, because uh, the, there's a cathedral ceiling or a higher ceiling that's, that that um, makes the space in the attic only five feet and not accessed by a stair because it's it's not connected, that it doesn't have to count as FAR. It counts as zero effectively. I think that's No, I, I I understand what you're saying, but what I what I don't understand is. Why would you want to put a scuttle in the ceiling of a master bedroom rather than use the existing stair for access and leave that wall? Open? We don't. We don't want to. This. This is. A, this is how. This is what we're being forced to do to try to keep the calculation. We don't necessarily want to. This is workable. The solution. This area wouldn't be used as storage anyway. But in order to keep the FAR calculation as low as we can, this is a strategy that we're using to do that. Right. I mean, you've got the option to open up that wall and have access from the existing attic, right? Right. We also have an option right now to finish the attic and do other things. But we're, not, we're not arguing about doing anything illegal or doing stuff in the, in the future. Uh, it, it, it does seem somewhat artificial to me. I mean, you're, yeah. do, you're doing something very awkward in order to ostensibly reduce the number so that it's not more than 27 percent. Right, but again, but again, you know, we're working within the requirements of the code and how, you know, this is something we've done, you know, this is something that Ed suggests, you know, if you, if you want to reduce this, you know, we can do this. This is not, again, we could have left the floor, we, there's another way we can get here, we can leave the floor down at the lower level, you know, they're, they're having the cathedral in the master is something that's preferable. Right, so raising the ceiling is something that we discussed anyway. 
we need a space for the admin. So it may seem like a game, gaming of the system to get to this point, but it actually has a functional basis for it. Like they are, the equipment is going to go up there. Um, then we will have a master. You'll separate the master suite from the other rooms by having an elevated ceiling. And you don't have an FAR impact because of it. Less than that there. Part of the rationale for that is that, is that if the ceiling height in, this, in, the, in the bedroom is greater than X, right? That counts as additional that they are. Right. right. It's, it's not it's, like this is not really as much of a, of a game as you may think. Right? You, you can't just raise the ceiling to above 14 feet and then suddenly it doesn't count as if they are. There's a limit. As soon as you go above 12 feet, the code says, okay, once you go above 12 feet, you have to count that space as, tw as twice. You have to count it twice. The yeah. So there, it's not like a wide open. Um, now, one other question. I mean, if you um, replace the existing stair to the attic with a scuttle, you'd be, you wouldn't have to be here on the, on the FAR basis, right? Well, only if you didn't finish the attic, right? Right. right. You also have to change, not finish the attic. The change from permanent stair to scuttle doesn't get you to, to, to zero. The change from finished unfinished gets you to zero. You need to do both. Yeah. You need right. to do both. Yeah. So, so yeah, this, this do one, not do the right, other. Right. This is the question. Like, so you get into these discussions about what modifications you could make to the inside of the house when the discussion here, FAO is supposed to limit the volume of the house because it has visual impact and environmental impacts outside. Right. So we could we could go down a path, and I think you know we may have to go down a path where uh, you have a, an attic that is unfinished, that is accessed by the stairs. The thing that I've seen in houses, especially in small houses in villages, what that does is it really works against my safety. And so there's a sort of thing that we've done here with this attic code where you get into a situation where people are using an attic scuttle um, where they could have a permanent stair. They're storing things in an unfinished attic, which has a, a not a good, you know, you could, there's a lot of situations like, honestly, guys, in your attic, you have a fire hazard because you have exposed insulation in that attic, and you have stuff stored in that attic against exposed insulation. So there's, there's things, I'm just saying, but there's, there's things, there's That's things right. like that that the finishing of the interior and the configuration of the interior stair for me is, it is just sort of an accident of this code that it's treated this way, right? It's, 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 a, it's a strange condition, and that's why I think what we're focusing on is like, if, if the concern is that the 27% is a, a measure of it being substantial, I would argue that look, we can take the attic stair out, we can unfinish the attic, it will be less functional for them, it will, the house will be that much less valuable, um, you know, it will be like that much less safe in a way we can do that, but I don't see what the benefit that is to the neighbors. I don't see what what improvement that makes to the condition. So I don't think people walking by there will say, oh my God, look at that big house because they finished the attic. Well, actually, what, what it does is it ends up being like, you know, we've had conversations like, well, I know their attic's finished, you know, like based on our analysis. And I think the thing is, it's just gotten a little bit off course here. And, and that's why I would argue, like, I think when I was in the letter, I was trying to argue, is like, instead of even thinking of it as a request for additional volume, what we're asking for is a request, would you please allow us to put a fixed stair and finish the attic? within this volume that we think is quite right. Um, the way the code reads, there's a separate section, you cited 224, 137 to it several times, and properly so. Uh, 224, 138 covers the procedure for FAR reviews, including zoning board appeals. And they lay out in subsection C what has to be done by an applicant if they want a variance of the FAR, including elevations, photos, drawing scale of the houses on all sides of the house, photographs of the neighboring houses, floor area ratios of the neighboring houses within 200 feet, and also whatever written or verbal testimony. I think, you know, if you haven't given us all the photographs, we've all been around there long enough to and offer enough to see, see what's there. But in the um, A0.13, which is the calculation 
submit at this time to the adjacent properties analysis, looking at the properties within 200 feet, and I believe these are the same ones we talked about previously. If you look at the FAR 4B, which is right next to yours, on Woodbine. On Woodbine. On Woodbine. Yeah. And then G, which is across, which is south of you, also between Woodbine and Oak. And then K, which is across the street in Oak. And those three are the most immediate neighbors. And I think those are the ones within 200 feet. And the FAR on those three, as you've got it here in the chart, is 113, which is half of the overage you propose. And then the other two are 77 and 71 percent of the neighbors. So. So that's the argument that I was sort of discussing earlier, is that in all those cases, in all those cases, or in two of those cases, the attic is counted at 0 percent. No, I think they're 50 percent. So the first one is 0. The first one is 0, right? And then the next two you say, attic is 50 percent. So which one is, I'm sorry, it's G. G and K, yeah. G is 50 percent. And K is 50 percent. So G is. So G is next to us on that side. So the argument for why G would have a lower FAR is because it's a double lot, right? It's the lot comparison for that area. It's a much larger lot, and FAR is calculated based on the lot size. So that would be the argument for that one. B, the argument is it's a similar size lot, but again, the attic is counted at 0 percent. So if you added that, you would be up to 30 percent. And then K is across the street. Is this one? K, I think it's the house is an unexpanded house. So I mean, the house is similar. I think that's the word. It's a what? Unexpanded house. I think it's similar to the size of the house that their house is currently. So that's, I think, what the argument is there. It has a garage associated with it, and the garage would have an FAR offset. So the garage, the 200 or 400 square feet that's associated with the garage has been taken out of that analysis because garages don't count. So again, the overall volume of all of those properties, I think the volume of this property is going to be larger than what we're proposing. This one, the volume of this one is probably, if you added the garage, it might be a little less or similar. But it's not. I mean, we have to deal with what's there, not with what may be there if they had a garage. No, I'm saying the volume, not the FAR. I was saying the volume, the actual volume, not the FAR. So that's what we're arguing. It's like that this, you know, there's two sides of it. I think the volume is consistent. This is volume of the FAR is consistent with what the neighbors are, consistent with the neighborhood. I think from an impact and substantiality point of view, the very fact that we can revise the project to have a scuttle and an unfinished attic means that, you know, this can't be that much. It can't be that substantial, right, because we're only talking about changes within a building. Okay. I think on this one, what I would like to do is to hear the thoughts of the board members, not just whether you have questions or comments for Mr. Malone, but I'd like to hear what you folks think. Start to the left, since you came late. I am, I don't see a reason to preclude a stair and the use of an attic in a space that's otherwise allowable by right to this case. I can think of situations where I've been offended by it. I can think of an example on Riverview Road where a developer, you know, built the max and promised that an area wouldn't be used as usable space and then came back later when after he sold the house and they wanted to add that space on as a room. I thought that was a scam. I don't see this the same way. I see this as an attic that you want to put stuff in the store. They can do that. We're not telling them they can't store stuff. We're just telling them to pull down the staircase every time, climb up the stairs, 
find the lights. I mean, I, I have one of those staircases. I, if, 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 if I, I just don't see that as an appropriate. Uh, the, the, I see the benefit to the applicant far away any concern that the village can have on this, in this case. Well said. I agree. I can. I, I agree. I have what to. What did you guys take? <laughs> I have to agree with Evan. Uh, it makes no uh, exterior difference. Uh, there, there's no difference in volume. Uh, but why make them use a, a scuttle or a drop-down stairs or anything of that sort? I, I just don't see the point of it. Uh, maybe it's a quarrel with the uh, building code, but <clears throat> I just do not see any detrimental effect uh, to anyone else. Yeah, I agree. You might have guessed from the comment I made, and I'm that thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can all say I I concur with Evan's comments and those of the others. Yeah, well, I 100 percent agree. I think what people want to do in their own house here is their own business. I think mean, I, I really don't think we have any place in this. I don't. Well, you know that's that's interesting. I mean, I've thought about this a lot, and um, it, it, there there are chances at this point that your application will be approved. <laughs> But, but uh, it, it seems to me basically what we're being asked to do here is to simply ignore what the code says. And the code is not perfect. It has lots of flaws. This sort of reminds me of jury nullification. I almost made it onto a jury once, and that's ultimately what they did. It would have been very interesting to sit in the jury room and go through that. Um, I don't think the rule makes a lot of sense in this circumstance and right in the, you know, when there's some obvious attempt to abuse the system, which has not happened here. Um, but that's what the Freedom Code says. And I am, I, I guess where I'm going to come out on this, especially given the feelings of my colleagues, is to move to approve this, but to do something with board of trustees. I'd be happy to help with that. To make, yes. to make them yes. understand that the rule just, you know, it's not cre it's not creating the benefit that they think they were trying to create when they put this through. Yeah, I think it's right for abuse, too, because I do think builders build up to the umpteenth degree, but then put... Without telling you. There's, right, but then put another, it unfinished. There's another side that yeah. I think I may have touched with you guys last time is the, the, the role of reducing um, attic level FAR is to promote um, slow crews, right? That's yeah. originally how it started, right. where you start right. to promote people doing gables as opposed to going up to the maximum of 35 feet with a flat roof. Yeah. And what this does is promote flat roofs. It does the opposite. Yeah. And I, I think it, it is, it's just something that I, I think it's just gone awry. And I think maybe there was a concern about life safety or people putting bedrooms in their attic or something. I don't know what drove it, but it's not a zoning issue. It's something else that drove it. So I see those as more bedrooms than you'd want in, you know, things like that, you know, that's your apartment inside the city. Yeah. But, but I don't understand to the extent it limits storage in an attic and, and making that safe. That just doesn't make sense. But, you know. And if it makes you feel better, the code doesn't power us to get there and it says one person. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. So oh, we're following you, the code. My goodness. <laughs> Boy, what answer every, every objection there is, wouldn't it? I'll have to remember that one. Okay, for the reasons articulated by lots of people, um, I will move to approve this. Do I have a second? All right, let's vote on the right, John. Yes. 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 Okay. My opinion.